interesting. Yeah, I mean, the trade talks and negotiations uh, consider uh, are continuing in the background, rather. So obviously we have no or little access uh, to what's actually being said. We do know a talks do continue. Steve Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, and Liu He, whom you mentioned earlier. Uh, this is uh, the new, the recently promoted vice premier in China in charge of economic as well as uh, financial policy. Very important man uh, taking point for China in terms of its relationship with the U.S. and very much on this trade issue as well, and very important to President uh, Xi Jinping. Now, uh, conversely, we've also been talking to a lot of business leaders here as our coverage continues at the uh, China Development Forum. A lot of U.S. business luminaries, of course, you know, Tim Cook is here and has been trying to calm things down, saying uh, people should keep uh, calm heads here. Also, somebody considered the doyen of American businessmen in China with a stake in China and its future. The legendary founder and also still CEO of the private equity giant Blackstone, Stephen Schwartzman. Well, there's obviously a number of actions that the, uh, the, the U.S. has taken uh, recently, whether it's steel and aluminum or uh, the 301 uh, uh, issues on intellectual property, or uh, I think to come will, will be certain investment uh, issues. And, and the, 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 these issues really uh, stem from certain types of imbalances uh, between countries. Sure. Uh, in particular, uh, the situation with the U.S. and China. But, but I mean, is, is raising tariff barriers even higher the way to do this, though? Well, I think there's, there, there needs to be a negotiated uh, uh, arrangement okay. uh, between the two countries. And I think it's important to note that most of the types of things that are being discussed from the U.S. side uh, can be delayed uh, in terms of their implementation uh, and, and hopefully will be uh, because I, I think there's a need for the two countries to uh, basically normalize uh, their uh, relationships uh, and, and you can't do it on a three to one difference. Uh, and, and so I anticipate uh, that uh, rational uh, people will be able to come to a really good uh, solution, which okay. would be good for both countries. Some people have described you as sort of President Trump's China whisperer. I'm sure you've read some of the stories, right? Based on your relationship with the president, what you know, and possibly even the recent conversations you've had with him, can you take us into his mind right now? What is he thinking with regards to U.S.-China? Well, if, 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 if I knew completely, I wouldn't share it on global television. Uh, <laughs> I was hoping you would. But. I, I realize you do, but that's, that's not what, what I do. I, okay. uh, I, I think he's been pretty consistent uh, uh, in terms of just wanting to have a you know, sort of what I guess he would call fair trade, which is having the same burdens uh, or similar burdens uh, on, on each country uh, so, so that the most competitive company wins, not, not the most competitive uh, uh, system in terms of friction okay. uh, wins. And I, I think that's really uh, pretty much what it is. Okay. Uh, I don't think it's more complex uh, than that. Uh, and, and so what he's doing uh, is, is sort of consistent with that. And, and so the solutions are, are pretty predictable. An increasingly nervous China is what we have today. If you could speak directly to them to try and calm some of these fears, what, what would you tell them? So I think it's important uh, not, not to overreact. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm sure China will of course react to sure. some of this and that's appropriate. Um, but, but overreaction leading to overreaction is, is really, you know, not uh, uh, a good idea. And I think uh, if I could be so bold, the, the Chinese are sufficiently uh, measured and uh, thoughtful. Okay. Uh, that I don't anticipate that, that that will be what results. So measured and thoughtful the Chinese leaders may be, but uh, you know when push comes to shove, Joe Stieglitz, the Nobel laureate in economics over Colombia, uh, thinks they've got a plan, and it is to inflict maximum political damage on President Trump. 
This has, of course, been traditional, uh, I won't say trade war, but tit for tat yeah. uh, uh, trade policy. Uh, you target where it hurts the most. Mm. Uh, when uh, the U.S. Uh, threatened steel tariffs against the EU, EU came back in a very focused way and says, Harley Davidson, uh, uh, bourbon, yeah. and jeans. Now you would say, why in the world did they pick those three commodities? They're not the most important commodities. Well, Harley Davidson, Wisconsin, Paul Ryan, uh, bourbon, Mitch McConnell, uh, and jeans, uh, Nancy Pelosi in San Francisco. So that's the way trade game is played. And uh, there, uh, China has, uh, I am quite sure, uh, a very good economic map mm. uh, with which they will target uh, certain places in the United States where the pain will be maximized. Sure. So it could be something to what uh, Joe Stieglitz is uh, saying there with regards to China, because we've got reports that China could target U.S. agri-export from farm belt uh, states in the U.S., which are obviously, as we know, very important to President Trump. Guys. Still watching? Perfect. Click here to watch another great video from CNBC International. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.